معنا نهج حياة جئنا تبصرة عن كل ضلال أعددنا بضع رسالات تحمل نورا للأجيال Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to this bite-sized video discussing when Eid is. In this video, I'll be talking about Eid being a fitting end to a month of fasting, a month of patience, a month of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a month of blessings. Secondly, about how Eid is determined. Thirdly, why people celebrate Eid on different days. And lastly, some of the dilemmas that a person may face when loved ones are performing Eid on different days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Blessed Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 185 You are to complete the prescribed period of fasting and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful for the blessings that he has given you. In this particular part of the verse, some of the Mufassireen have written that this is the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the occasion of Eid. You will have noticed that around the Eid time, we recite Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. For Eid al-Fitr, this is for the Hanafis done silently. But nevertheless, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this occasion as it is a moment of celebration which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us. It is called Eid because it returns again and again. It brings the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala year on year. It is also a moment of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it brings to an end the period of fasting. And again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the opportunity to do that. And once it is broken, then we glorify him for blessing us and ensuring that the days to come are good. Eid is determined using a hadith of the Prophet والسلام, in which he instructs us, Sumu li ru'yati wa li ru'yati fa'in ghumma alaykum fa'aqtarula Fast after you observe it, the crescent moon and break your fasts by observing it, i.e. determining of Eid. If it becomes obscure for you, and you can't sight the moon for any reason, then make a calculation or complete 30 days. Not everyone needs to observe the moon itself. Rather, if there is a credible witness, then that is sufficient. People in authority will usually spread the news about aid. In the UK, because of our geographical location, we, it is sometimes difficult to determine the beginning of every month by the sighting of the crescent moon. It could be several months before we actually see a crescent moon. So if every time we completed a month, we did it with 30 days, we would be several days off. As a possible solution, some have suggested that we follow Saudi Arabia. Others have said that we follow a home country, for example. And there are many other suggestions that are made. However, these are not in line with the rulings that we have in the Sharia. One of the most important points is that our horizons are different. And the differences in horizons would mean that a different determination needs to be made. It is reported in Muslim that Quraib came from Asham and informed Abdullah ibn Abbas about the starting of Ramadan being different to the people of Medina. To which Abdullah ibn Abbas replied that we have our own judgments that are made here and that is how the Prophet taught us. So we understand from this that the starting of the month must be from the sighting of the crescent moon. In the UK, it is difficult to determine every month in this fashion. Similarly, it is not possible for us to go to a different horizon or a different time zone in order to get this information. We learn from this that every month must start with the sighting of the crescent moon. 
in the UK for several months we might not be able to see that crescent moon. It is not a solution to look at a different horizon from a different country. So here at Al Jamia Sufatul Islam we follow the British Muslim Forum Committee which is a group of scholars from different areas of the UK who have come together and they give the following solution. They say that we will first look at the astronomical calculations as to where it is possible to see the moon and then when we get a credible witness who has actually sighted the moon from there then we will determine it for the UK. But that location must be in our time zone. As recently as 2011, a very embarrassing situation arose where Saudi Arabia announced Eid al-Fitr after somebody had sighted Saturn in the horizon. That was because it wasn't possible to see the moon at that time and that was acknowledged only days later and a expiation was given on behalf of the Ummah. This is simply not acceptable as the determining of Eid and indeed of Ramadan or any month is a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our worship shouldn't be susceptible to this kind of blunder. In fact, when there are procedures that can be followed, we have the information to avoid this kind of mistake beforehand, not allow it to arise in the very first place. Then at the very least we can take those calculations that we have and use them to determine where the sighting of the moon is possible. We are not saying that the determining of the month is going to be through these calculations. Rather, the calculations are going to be there simply to say if it's possible to observe the crescent moon. And then when the witness actually comes through, then that will be the determining factor for starting the month here in the UK. So the reasons why people are celebrating Eid on different days is because they are following different rules. Some, some people are going from local sightings and not finding anything and completing 30 days. Others may follow Saudi Arabia, others may follow a home country. And as I've just explained, that we at Al Jamia Sufat al Islam are taking this particular opinion. We think that this is a very simple solution and it is self-explanatory in that it is in line with the Sharia teachings and also very practical for us here. Unity is of great importance. Here at Al Jamia Sufat al Islam we value it. Whilst there are many options available for calculating ibadat which are common to all Muslims, then we reserve the right of selecting the correct one in accordance with the Sharia, the one that we feel is most compliant. Interestingly enough, even the Saudis have issued numerous fatah over the past years saying that do not follow Saudi Arabia as that is not a Sharia compliant method of working out the starting of the months. So you may be asking, who should I follow? Well, when the evidence is quite clear in front of you, then that is what you should follow. If you find that you are observing Eid on different days to your loved ones, then certainly don't waste the rewards that you have gathered over the month of Ramadan and waste them in an instant. On a day that you are to be glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't want to spend it cursing those that are fasting or cursing those that are celebrating. This is not what we have learnt over this blessed month. If you are fasting and others are celebrating Eid, then a suggestion would be that you try to meet them towards the end of the day or certainly after you have opened your fast. That way you will stay out of the way. But the onus is on those who will be celebrating because then they can delay their celebrations till the next day and make more of a celebration on the next day when everybody is out of the fasting period. The conversation should never lead to insulting each other and certainly not the scholars. That is not the way of the believers. It is mentioned in at tabarani that Urdu aliman, be scholarly, or mutaliman, or be a student, or mustami'an, or somebody who listens to the scholars, or muhibban, or at the very least be somebody who loves the scholars. 
ولا تكون الخامسة. Don't be the fifth. And when pushed, the narrator replies that the fifth is the person who doesn't do any of these things. We are told that this fifth category of person will fatuhlak, will destroy themselves. So don't destroy the whole of this month's rewards by insulting each other or even the scholars. Just remember that ليس العيد لمن لبس الجديد إنما العيد لمن خاف يوم الوعيد That Eid is not for the one who wears new clothes Rather, Eid is for the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath In summary, Eid is a day of celebration A day of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala At al Jamia Suf al-Islam We determine the beginning of the Eid in accordance with the announcement of a group of scholars who look for a sighting in areas where a sighting is possible. If you are going to celebrate Eid on a different day to your loved ones, then ensure that you don't go down the slippery slope of insulting and cursing and losing all the rewards that you have worked so hard in accumulating over this blessed month of Ramadan. Last but not least, on behalf of everybody at Al Jamia Sufat Islam, let me wish you a happy, joyous and fruitful Eid. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe below. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.